Turning to our third quarter results, our better than expected performance was driven primarily by Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Online, and NBA 2K22. Sales of Grand Theft Auto V continue to be strong, and to date the title has sold in more than 160 million units worldwide. Since its launch in 2013, Grand Theft Auto V has remained within the top five best-selling titles for each calendar year across the Americas, including the U.S., and over 50 major territories across Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and Asia Pacific. 2021 marked another excellent year for Grand Theft Auto Online, with the title matching 2020's record-setting monthly audience size. Grand Theft Auto Online's engagement was driven by an array of free content updates, including new events around Halloween, new vehicles and clothing options for the race creator, and the contract update featuring Grammy Award-winning artist, legendary producer, and this year's Super Bowl halftime show headliner, Dr. Dre, which were all released during the third quarter. In particular, the contract broke new ground for Grand Theft Auto Online from a design standpoint with its deep story elements and increased access for solo players, while also advancing Rockstar Games' unique ability to innovate through incorporating elements of pop culture and music into their experiences. The update also features co-op story missions, with Grand Theft Auto V protagonist Franklin and sidekick Lamar as playable characters, a new social space, Record Ace Studios, where players are able to hang out with Dr. Dre and special guests, a new radio station hosted by global pop stars Rosalia and Arca called Motomani Los Santos, named after Rosalia's forthcoming album, updates to two existing radio stations from LA DJ Royalty, DJ Pooh and Big Boy, six exclusive new tracks by Dr. Dre, which officially released to streaming services this past Friday, and new purchasable properties, vehicles, and more. In addition, Rockstar Games celebrated the 20th anniversary of the launch of Grand Theft Auto III with the release of Grand Theft Auto The Trilogy, the definitive edition for current and prior-gen consoles and PC via the Rockstar Games launcher, with the title significantly exceeding our commercial expectations. Red Dead Redemption 2 also had an excellent quarter. The title's outperformance was primarily driven by strong holiday sales, and to date, it has sold in nearly 43 million units worldwide. In addition, Red Dead Online outperformed our expectations due to strong sales of Red Dead Redemption 2 and the continued influx of new players alongside a series of updates, including the fourth installment of the Quick Draw Club, All Hallows Call to Arms, the Halloween Pass 2, and the Holiday Call to Arms. Looking ahead to fiscal year 2023, Rockstar Games will launch Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition for iOS and Android devices in the first half of calendar 2022. Net bookings were $866 million, which was above our guidance of $800 to $850 million, and up 6% as compared to last year. Our outperformance was primarily driven by Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Red Dead Online, and NBA 2K22. The largest contributors to net bookings are expected to be NBA 2K, Grand Theft Auto Online, and Grand Theft Auto 5, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Red Dead Online, Borderlands 3, and Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition. We expect the net bookings breakdown from our labels to be roughly 50% 2K, 40% Rockstar Games, and 10% Private Division and T2 Mobile Games. Our first question is from Mario Liu with Barclays. Please proceed with your question. Okay, so one of the main drivers of outperformance this quarter, you guys mentioned, was the trilogy. Um, but I believe there, was, there were a number of bugs at launch that affected gameplay. So, uh, you know, one, have those issues been fixed? And then two, more importantly, has there been any changes made to the QA process to ensure that this does not happen to future launches, such as, you know, GTA Enhanced next month and the next entry in the series thereafter? Thanks. Thanks for the question. Yes, we are totally focused on quality here, and we always want to deliver the best possible experience. Very occasionally we fall short, and I think the trilogy was an example of that. And, and, and the, uh, the title was launched with some issues. We've addressed many of them. There are more fixes to come. And going forward, we remain highly focused on quality, and we are exceedingly confident in all of our upcoming releases. Hi. Thank you for taking my question. Um, I was under the impression that GTA 5 Enhanced is not available for purchase yet. Can we confirm that? And uh, how do you think about the pricing strategy for the GTA Enhanced relative to GTA 5 Premium 
do you intend to use pricing to differentiate the different value proposition between the upcoming enhanced edition and uh, the current edition? So uh, the, G the enhanced, so the next gen versions of GTA 5 are not, in fact, available for purchase yet, but they will be. Um, and in terms of pricing, we haven't discussed any pricing models around those releases. So conceptually, how would you market the enhanced edition versus the premium edition? So besides the graphic changes and content, is there any um, any reasons you would give the upcoming um, you know, potential buyers to purchase the premium edition also? Yeah, it's an enhanced version for Gen 9 consoles. Um, and and there will be a lot of upgrades and plenty of reason to, to uh, purchase it. And uh, Rockstar, obviously, will be talking about that in the marketing materials. Yes, good afternoon, and thanks for the question. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, looks like you sold on a quarter-over-quarter quarter basis an incremental 4 million units, your best quarter in, uh, in a little bit of quite some time. Uh, I'm curious, was there anything special that led to that increase in, in unit sales, or was this sort of, you know, seasonality around the holidays? And secondly, I'm just curious what you're seeing from new cohort spending on Red Dead Online versus sort of existing cohort spending. So for um, Red Dead Redemption 2, we had a lot of um, holiday promos during um, the Christmas season, and that really drove a lot of the units, as well as we had a series of updates. Um, so a lot of people were um, playing the game, so that really drove a lot of those units. And in terms of um, the new cohort spending, um, we don't have any real details on that. Hey, Strauss, Carl Laney, congrats on the quarter, guys. Thanks for taking my questions. Just two, uh, I'm not sure if you have uh, – given us the engine on this, but the GTA Trilogy from mobile, is, is, is that free to play or, or is that a, a premium offering? So we haven't discussed pricing for Trilogy from mobile yet. Our next question is from Andrew Merrick with Raymond James. Please proceed with your question. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Um, with the performance of the contract so far and its greater emphasis on single player, I guess, how does that inform your roadmap for future GTA Online content releases? And does it necessarily say anything about the appetite for single player experiences more broadly? Thanks. You know, there was a time when, um, when a couple of our competitors were, were taking the position that single player was, was dead. We never took that position. We know that there's a role for a single player. I believe there will be a role going forward. Uh, then there are certain games that are meant to be only multiplayer experiences. Um, Rockstar is known for its storytelling, and yes, Rockstar is also known for these fantastic open world experiences. Uh, they clearly do both really well, um, and the contract shows, as you just said, that um, consumers are really excited about Rockstar's storytelling ability, and at the same time, we had a great quarter with Grand Theft Auto Online, so there's a lot of excitement there. So the answer is sort of, uh, you know, all of the above. Uh, thank you. Um, just to follow up on a GTA Trilogy question from earlier, I believe work for the game was largely outsourced, and I think you've noted for remasters or ports sometimes that's best for, you know, from a resource standpoint. Um, my question is, does the experience with Trilogy lead you to rethink this model at all, or is this just a, an isolated case? Thanks. Uh, we've had precious few quality lapses at this company. Um, so any time that we've fallen short from a quality point of view, it has been an isolated case, and we aim to keep it that way. Uh, however, we're not changing our business model.